Hello and welcome everyone. This is Dmitry. We are having another network programmability stream. Uh, it's no longer a streaming marathon, which has ended last week. It's our usual every Sunday streams. Um, though we will continue the project that we, is that we started doing the marathon. And I think today is going to be the last stream about this project. Um, there is still probably a lot of work that needs to be done, but it's no longer going to be interesting. It's going to be like, there is nothing to show really. The, after the stream, what I think will happen is that I will just need to collect data in the background. Uh, today, the focus is going to be knowing you're in Python async IO on our lab. On previous stream, it was Ansible. So we will be testing performance on this huge lab with 500 routers of Nornier and I think I, in comparison to Ansible. This is our goal for today. Uh, before jump into that, um, there are a couple of things that I would like to discuss. Um, some announcements, if you will. Oh, and by the way, if you're watching this as a recording on YouTube, there should be a time code below allowing you to switch between different sections of the video. Uh, so, announcements. First of all, Cisco Live Europe is coming. It's going to be two weeks from now, exactly two weeks from now. Uh, and I'm going to be there. I, I'm going to have um, my Nornier presentation and NetConf Yank workshop. So if you will be at Cisco Live Europe, please do let me, uh, let me know, let's, let's meet, uh, let, let's chat uh, in person. Now, it will obviously impact some of my streaming schedule. So first of all, there will be no stream two weeks from now uh, because I will be uh, I will be flying on the day, so I, I cannot make it. Uh, and it's very likely that a week afterwards, we will also not have one because I will be very exhausted after the trip, uh, but that is under consideration. Okay, so just letting you know guys that two weeks from now we will definitely not have stream. I'm also debating about the next week because there is still some prep that I need to do for Cisco Live and um, streaming every week doesn't really help. Um, okay, another one, very important and whenever I think about it, it's just hype in my head. So I'm planning an exclusive stream with some guests um, about something that is not public yet. Um, I am like 80% confident it's going to happen. There is still like some um, scheduling stuff I have to figure out with my guests um, because of the like time zones and stuff, but I am pretty confident we will be able to find some common ground there. Uh, and if that happens, uh, the stream is planned to be next week. Uh, we still like haven't selected the date like for sure. So when we will do, I will let you know. But yeah, um, I'm very hyped. This is going to be the first time ever I have guests on my stream. And this is going to be the first time ever we will talk about something and we'll, well, we will play with something that, um, that is not public. Yeah. So, um, I'm very excited about that. You may even find some Easter eggs in this stream uh, to give you some idea of what that could be. Um, so yeah, um, look for announcements, especially on Twitter. Uh, if we, do make it happen. Um, well, I will do my best to make sure that, you know, learning at Cis Cisco and some other entities and DevNet and other folks that are, you know, that I'm friends with help me like promote this because, um, yeah, I hope this is going to be huge. Um, so yeah, very hyped. Um, very excited uh, about that. Uh, 
let's see let's see i'm just hoping it will happen uh and then it's going to be awesome um okay and yeah you know i'm sorry i'm speechless and also <laughs> Uh, never mind, never mind. Let's just keep going. Uh, another, some of the other announcements, not related to me in particular, but something that I would like to share with you is uh, HTTPX Python library. So this is a library which allows you to do HTTP requests. Um, there was a thread on Hacker News, and there was also a new release of this library which now supports both async IO and, well, does support async and sync at the same time, finally. Um, and uh, there is very good feedback on Hacker News about it. I have tried it as well. I have very positive impression about it. So um, do go check it out. I do believe this is a, like, a replacement for requests in Python. Uh, it's not that popular yet, but I feel like it's going to be at some point. So, yeah, uh, make sure to check it out. Then the last piece that I would like to share with you, something not related to the stream, is this um, uh, kind of like, a, is it a white paper? No, I don't think it's white paper. So there is this Tel F systems, which is uh, was bought by Cisco at some point. And every so often they publish like... Um, like some kind of article in PDF form uh, about some of the like net config stuff and some of their own developments and stuff like that. So there was a change in their RFC, well, addition to RFC of net config recently. Uh, and it looks quite interesting. So if you go to the, well, so I published it on Twitter, I retweeted this. And then there is a link here for PDF. So what is going to happen is there is going to be a new data store called intended and operational in netconf uh, yang. Um, so make sure you do check it out. Um, some like significant changes in the RFC, something to be aware of. Okay. So that's all I wanted to share with you that is not directly related to today's stream. Uh, and now let's actually go ahead and start. Well, let's first try to remember where we are, like what is the status of this project, what we have done and what's left to do. So uh, during this project, we built this huge lab of 500 routers. Um, it's mostly controlled by API and some Python script. So like whenever I need to delete nodes, start nodes, whatever, I have a Python script which does that for me. Um, we, uh, we set up, we created an inventory, Ansible inventory for this, um, again, using Python script, uh, newbie pirate. Thank you for following. We also, uh, we also started testing Ansible. Um, so we did a huge performance testing for two types of tasks. So we had, um, uh, we had uh, command output gathering and writing the, to a file. And another playbook was con con doing simple configuration across this whole network. Yeah. Uh, so this was last stream. And we were also testing uh, three types of inventory. So our standard inventory with 500 devices, but filtered on 50 just 500 routers and then inventory with 500 routers, but with uh, the um, with a lot of variables. So like one, uh, like every device has like 10 kilobytes of data or something or 15, I don't remember already uh, in the inventory. And we were also changing uh, different Ansible settings like number of forks, strategy linear or free, uh, some other stuff. <clears throat> So, uh, and we were looking at like how the runtime changes and it does change significantly. Um, so I was deep, like after the stream, I was thinking like, did I do a decent job there? Like, did I, because, um, 
at some point all of this research that we are doing right now is going to be compiled in a blog article i do hope like it's going to happen soon but it's like a lot of work it's uh but uh my intent is to be as um fair as i can so like um you know i don't want to even though like i don't like answer right i don't want it to be Oh, here with Ansible, we will use the worst possible setting and then compare it to the best possible code that I can write with Python async AI, right? So I don't want that. So I want to be as fair as I can there in testing. Um, and there was some thinking, we, uh, some thoughts which didn't really help me sleep at night. Um, again, because I want to be objective here. Um, and I was also talking to some of my friends to like understand what is the best way to do it. So you will probably going to do, well, I will probably going to do a uh, retesting of Ansible. However, we are going to increase RAM a little bit more. So right now we have, let me see. I think right now I have eight gigs of RAM on this machine. Yeah, I have eight gigs. And we found that um, Ansible really consumes a lot of memory on big inventories. Uh, and with the uh, increasing number of works, it also consumes a lot of memory. Uh, I can't increase it significantly because all of this is run on my machine. Like, I think I can do like 12, but I can do more. Um, and it would be more fair if I increase this RAM to like allow it to run like as fast as it can. Um, there are still like some constraints of my machine, but you know, at least I will do my best here to, to... so yeah, my plan is to change from eight gigs to 12 and retest Ansible to see like how that is going to change. Now, another thing is, uh, I will need to change iOS command to CLI command module, mostly because um, CLI command is right now a recommended module. Uh, this is like where Ansible is going. So I think, you know, by using this, it's also like not, not um, doing a great job like with reporting. So I will use the CLI command module um, so I have to do these changes. So this is not going to happen today. Now, what we are going to do today. So today we are going to test Nornier Async IO on our network, on our lab. Uh, and what tests we are going to do? Well, first of all, you have to build a new script which builds a Nornier inventory, okay? So we already had the script which uh, do, does that for uh, Ansible. We need to do the same for Nornier. Uh, I do have to make a comment here that it's not necessary for Nornier to do this, right? If you ha if you can create this inventory in program, well, you can create this inventory in completely programmatic way without like YAML files and stuff like that, right? So you can just write your custom inventory where like um, you convert some stuff to like proper dictionaries and Nornier will understand that. However, um, I want to, com be, to compare uh, apples to apples when we are talking about Ansible and Nornier. And this means that we need to have, uh, like if I'm using an Ansible, their simple inventory with YAML files, I want to use exactly the same in Nornier. So even though it's not a requirement of Nornier, I think it's uh, also like makes complete sense to do. It. We will also do the same thing where we will have uh, two types of inventory, standard, and then extended one with many variables. And we will also be filtering standard on 50 nodes, again, just to see how it performs. And the only setting that we really need to care about in Norni is various number, number of workers. Um, so we will have to test that. Now, what about async IO stuff? We already built a script which does async IO. However, the problem is also here is the same. We, I would like to have some kind of on-disk inventory. We could reuse Nornier inventory, but 
whatever like it doesn't matter i just want to have something on disk just to have so that we have fair comparison um again standard extended inventory will have uh, various number of simultaneous tasks using uh, semaphore um, so we already was we were playing with this uh, I think like um, I don't remember what was the best number and then the last piece that I'm really really curious about is what if we had multi-processing on top of a sync IO so one of the observations which we had with the sync IO last time was that uh, the script was consuming 100% of a single core. So even though we had eight cores, we were not using them in any way. So I'm thinking of adding multiprocessing on top of Sync IO and see if that helps. So I'm very curious about that and the results of this step. All right, we have a lot of work to do folks. So let's get started. If you as always, if you have any questions, do let me know in the um, in the chat. GWP Sin, hello, how are you doing? Oof, that was a lot of talking. Let me write some code now. Uh, right. So, what do we need to do? Uh, we need to build an ordinary inventory first. And let me think what would be the best way to proceed here. Hmm. I think it would make sense if I create a new folder called Nornir here. Got off for a trip to uh, Cisco Life Europe on Friday, but too short notice for me to get a ton and stuff. I'm sorry. Maybe it's still not that late. I was actually booking my uh, my flight uh, yesterday. Yeah, I was I was booking my flight yesterday, so there was still like some economy seats uh, on on flight. I did book hotel beforehand, so I. Um, if you have a chance to come, it's going to be very fun. Um, this year, I think the there is going to be a new stuff in DevNet called DevNet Lightning Talks. Uh, I'm very curious to see that. Ah. Yeah, I hope next time. All right. Okay, what do I need to have? I need to have some uh, reference, yes. So nor near read the docs. Because I don't remember like all the stuff on top of my head. Uh, I want to have something in front of me when I am doing this. Okay, this. Uh, inventory, host YAML. Hmm. Okay. So if I say inventory, um, I think I may need to have requirements txt here. Excuse me, folks. Uh, uh, this is not correct, by the way. No. Okay. Even though, like, I don't like a requirements txt, but I think in this case it's kind of warranted. Um. So what do I need? I need. Uh. Let me think. Hmm. Uh, ha, ha, ha. I need another inventory here. Well, another thing. Uh, 
if I say Nornir and we create a new virtual environment here okay and then I say you can install Nornir uh, and what else do I need? I need Ramo YAML. And then I want to write this down in the requirements txt. Oh, God damn it. Interesting. I think I would need to, uh, let me write this down. Uh, this needs to be resolved. Was there any PR here? Uh, hmm. I can keep this. Yeah, I can keep this. We'll have to resolve this in Ornier. Right. Cool. Uh, and I want to say pip freeze. Grab Ramo or uh, Nornir. What? Oh, um, is it like this? I keep forgetting the syntax for for uh, grab when you want to have like multiple matches. I honestly, I I need it very often, and then I just don't remember it. Uh, uh, okay, why this didn't copy? All right, so I have this requirements txt. Uh, another thing is I want to check in Ansible our inventory. Yeah. So I have group core uh, and I have switch one. So we have to keep that. Uh, this was in our top level. Yeah, I will really need to rearrange all of this. It's not the best. I think lab here, and we had build in build Ansible inventory, yeah. And then let's do Hmm. What if we split right? And I will keep this as a reference. Okay. So build uh, nor in your inventory, yeah. self dear boss str you don't need the random data because in Ornia by default you don't load the extra data um, oh ouch hmm uh, hmm Okay, I want to rename this.
Okay. Uh, and he will have Nornir as well. And we will have to create almost the same thing, I guess. I'll have to think this through, hold on. Uh, give me one second, folks. Right, sorry for that. Uh, okay, so how do we do this? So we have, how do we do it with Ansible? Hmm. We create an Ansible inventory. We have a root in uh, Nornia, we don't have a root. Uh, Ansible global virus. Yeah, I think this could be actually a good place to start. Um, so we will have uh, <laughs> no near default words, and I need to be careful here. So it's username and password. And unlike Ansible, if you misspell one of these, right? I can actually show this. No, I can't show it to you right now. It's too early. But um, if in Nornir, if you misspell this and you run your Nornir script, it will complain that saying, I don't know what username means. So you have this very strict schema, which is super helpful. Uh, so I need, I don't need this, but I do need platform. And I don't need board. Oh, I need, uh, sorry, platform. Okay. So this would be the first step, yeah? Um, so this is going to be our default, defaults.yaml file. We need hosts yaml file. Mm -hmm. And host.yaml, the only thing it will contain is the host name, uh, host, host name, and then groups. And I need to have these groups created as well. I think I need to write it down. Oops. Um, what if you say the following? Uh, let's like create one, yeah? Let's say we have router one. Uh, 
and it will have a host name of 1015 one one yeah and then it will have groups and groups will have uh switch one and so on yep and then groups yaml should have a uh, group switch one uh, groups core one and then core one should have like this I think and then we'll have default YAML file. Okay, this looks good to me. Okay, so what do we need in order to create this? We will need to create an object for this. We'll need to create an object for this. And that's all. Yeah, defaults go to a separate folder. And then we also need for the host uh Okay, we will have here a new argument called host data separate and then by default it's going to be true so what this allows us to do because what i can say is data and here is the data or i can put it in the like separate file uh, the next step would be in this inventory we'll have a folder called hostwars cool okay so what do i need What do I need here? Ah. Okay, so I'll need a class nor near host. I will need class um, nor near group. I will need class nor near inventory and I will need class uh, vars okay Nornier inventory consists of three files of three entities hosts groups and defaults so i need to create it here and this is dictionary str nor near host then we'll have groups which is the same thing str nor near groups and then defaults is it should be just wars Um, yeah, I think this is decent. Okay, and then we'll have self hosts is equal to hosts, self groups, 
um, if you if you have ever seen Nornir source code, we are actually almost recreating Nornir source code right now. Okay. So this next thing. Uh, for wires we can say um, Well, to be fair, I would say even optional here. None. Okay. So then, I think we had in Ansible, we had dump or some. Yeah, we had dump. Well. We don't really need them because this goes to three different files. Um, I need the function which writes this to uh, to uh, write to dear. I will need something like this. Uh, I want to save this YAML stuff. Okay, I will just do this first. Okay. What is var? So this one is easy, yeah. And uh, this one will have pretty much anything. Vars is just a dictionary. of anything um, and then so self data is equal to data uh, this one can have From YAML, YAML, import YAML. I'm missing something. There was Yeah, where is this? Oh, I have it. Okay, cool. Um, so we can write to file. I can even say save on disk self and then uh, pass. Yes. And then I can say none. And this will say um, this one is going to be easy. This is going to be this open pass for write as f uh, yaml dump data f. So this will allow us to write variables like to a separate file for host yaml thing. So this one is easy.
Hmm. Okay. Now, in terms of ignoring your host and ignoring your group, they are pretty much the same thing in Nornir. And we'll say no inventory element class. And this one is going to be part of this. And this one is going to be part of this. Okay, I would change this as well. So this is going to be optional. Sorry guys, I'm all over the place, but this is just how I see this thing in my head as we go. And then I would say that if hosts is known uh host is equal to empty dictionary and the same thing here if groups is known groups is equal to empty dictionary okay so inventory element can have A bunch of things so inventory element can have username password platform blah 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 uh, I feel like I'm not making any sense here hmm So self will have first is host name, then user, and all of these should be optional, I think. So username is uh, hmm. optional is jar non, and then password uh, optional is jar non um and then so username password host name optional str non um and then what else? Groups, yes. Uh, we could list all of the, uh, oh, platform as well, yeah, platform. Optional. Str, non, and then groups, which is optional uh, list of str. Non as well. Yep, okay, and then this is going to be self uh, username is equal to username self password uh, is equal to password self host name is equal to host name self platform is equal to platform and then self groups is equal to group groups okay this inventory element uh, cool, and I need to import, so from typing import dictionary uh, optional dictionary and list. Okay, now this should have a dump function, self, and this will result in dictionary str any. 
Oh, and inventory element should also have a name. STR and this is not optional field. Yeah. So this should be self name is equal to name. An inventory element can also have uh, data, which is optional virus. I could say actually data. Data. Uh, you know what, guys? I am incorrect. Okay. Um, okay. Host and group can have a name, but Defaults, for example, doesn't have a name. Okay, so this is dictionary str any. So how do we do this? So, um, I could say, I I think I could say data here. And we will say, do I have a function? Hold on, filter none. Filter, yeah, I have this. So I would say data is this. If self username, then data username is equal to username. Uh, self username, of course, and we will have to rinse repeat this multiple times. Uh, okay, so if self password, if self platform, uh, host name. To be fair, I think this should always be on top. Host name, a username, password, platform, and then groups. Okay, and then the last thing is data. Yeah, I'm, I'm guys literally rewriting nor near core more or less okay and then the last piece should be if we have if we have if self name is something useful then data uh, then result is equal to uh, self name and data dictionary so this is for going to be for example router one if this is router one then this yeah or this could be a group but alternatively we'll have result is equal to data and this is useful for our defaults
Yep, and then we return the result. Okay, so this is useful. Uh, we still have this, this is fine. This is fine, oops. Uh, I think we need the function which writes No guys, I'm I'm wrong here. I need I need to have it here. So include include name boolean uh true I think. Yeah, this is how you need to do it. Include name bool true and then if include name yeah I think like this the reason why is that if you look on the host wars file it doesn't necessarily have these Okay, we are almost at one hour already. Well, I think we have been working this inventory for like 30 minutes right now. We, we should wrap it up already with the results. <laughs> it seems like it's, it, at first it seems like, wow, it's just should be super easy to do. But once you start doing it, Kind of takes more more time than you think. That's very weird. Okay, I don't think I have a use case for this wires now. Yeah, I just don't think I do. I can delete this. Uh, Stupak sixty two. That's how I feel every time. Yeah, absolutely. I, regardless of you know, I've been programming for quite a while, and I still can't get any correct estimate for anything that I do. It's like I not even ballpark of estimate is correct for me. Okay, let me think. Is this good enough? Uh, so this will allow me to write this part. This dump. Um, The part when I write random data to like a separate file, this will be out of out of these, I guess. Okay, think, 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 think. Okay, yes, I feel like, God damn it. Yes, this part is taken care of. This part is taken care of. Uh, what is not taken care of is collection of these. So for example, when I write the inventory, yes, how do I want to do it? So I want to So I think I should have something like this. So host data will be host dump for host in cell hosts uh, values 
then groups data will be group the same thing group dump for group in a cell group values okay so we have these as uh, the next thing we need is well defaults yes and defaults is an inventory element okay this one is easy defaults data is pretty much self defaults yes um dump and we say include name false and then we just write these pieces to a file well to a separate file um, if self defaults I will do it like this Post YAML, group YAML, and default YAML. Okay. So okay, from pass leap import pass. So this one is going to be pass from dear pants um, Okay, and he will say dear pass uh, groups.yaml. Okay, cool. So we have this, now we have to write all of this to the correct place. Oh, this one is easy, yeah? This one is going to be this open host file bus um, as f, f write. No, it's not f write, it's yaml dump uh, hosts data. F okay and so defaults data defaults Okay, yep, I think we are here good to go. Okay, so we have this right to dir and I put the directory and then we write all of these. Cool. 
home. Yeah. Now the last piece which is left to do is that we need to have um, We need to create hosts. This part is easy. Uh, we need like create inventory with these hosts um, in correct order. And we need to add groups as well. So I would say uh, we'll have a thing called add hosts. Add host, yes, self. And then host is going to be not near host. None. And it will say self uh, hosts um, host dot name is equal to host. Then we'll have self add group self uh, group nor near group nor near group yeah and non which might the same thing self uh, groups group dot name is equal to group Okay, yeah, um, this is pretty much it. I need to save this. I want to move it to the right. And then here in the lab, you have to just work with this thing. Uh, Nux Mephi, thank you for following. So the way it's going to be working Non-default argument follows default uh, default argument. Where do I see this? Uh, password non non. Oh, data is not yeah. Okay. any call password uh, okay yeah okay so build nor inventory so what do we have to do well, first of all we have to import all of our stuff yeah we have to say nor near inventory uh, nor near Host and nor near group. To be fair, I would e even rename this as well. And I would say this is nor near data. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we will need it, but let's just keep going. Okay. Cool. So, first of all, we create the inventory. We say inventory is nor near inventory. And we don't really have to provide anything, but we could provide default, defaults. We could say nor near inventory, and then defaults is going to be equal to do I have constants? No, I need to here to say um, nor near default wars. Okay. There's this. Then we will say 
for every device yes we will create nornier host you will say nornier host uh, I would say another host is equal to nornier host where we'll have this these things we'll have name is equal to device.name this is like r1 yes then we will not have username we'll not have password not platform because all of that goes to the defaults we will have groups uh we'll have groups and groups is equal to list where um, this should have a group of switch name okay so I have to go to my device I can take a look here I think connected core router name yeah this one okay so this should be a group like switch one or something cool uh, then The next piece is hmm. You can say inventory add host nor near host. However, that is not all. We still are not done with groups. We still have to say uh we need a new function which will say contains group self and then you say group name and then this is str and then we return boolean and what this will do is that it will say if group name in return group name in self groups okay because this is important so this, then the next piece is this we have to say if device core connected core outer name if inventory contains group named core router name uh, ssp3xx thank you for following so actually no if we if the this group is not there we have to say uh, inventory uh, well we have to first create an R group which will say nornier group and this group is only going to contain the name so this one is going to be this and then we add this group we say an R group cool and then we have to uh, repeat this again so this is like because we have this hierarchy where the device is part of the group switch and that switch is part of the group core um, I will be here the same thing if uh, inventory contains group uh, device connected switch name actually if not if that if it doesn't contain an and our group is going to be the same thing uh, and then this add group function we'll need another function called device get group self uh, group name str and then this returns nor in your group and this will be return self groups group name 
Okay. If we don't contain the switch name, the group switch name, we'll create a group called nonier group with the name of this switch. Uh, and but then this will have a group. So let's take a look on our topology. So I have here, so I have a group, so a router is connected to switch, which is connected to core. So this device should be a part of this group and this device should be a part of this group. So what I'm saying is that first, let me check if there is a group called core one. Yes, if not, we add it. Then I will say, do I have a group switch one or switch two? If I don't have it, we will create this group where it's ch child of group core one. Um, so this will be device connected router name and then inventory add group. Uh, I think from logic perspective, all of this is done. So I have all of this and then we just have to write this to a, file, to a directory. Yes, we will have to say uh, inventory write to dir And then I provide a directory and this is going to be what Nornier inventory. Yeah, we still missing random data. Uh, We will move this to utils. Okay, I will need to import dict any and UUID here. Dict any UUID. Uh, dict any and UUID. O P Q R S T U. Okay, so we put it here. U U I D. Cool. Um, then we, I don't need this. We have to take a look where I am referring to this function. I think it was in the lab. Yep. We will say utils create random data. Uh, I need to import this, of course. Uh, from up import utils and then I can do this thing uh, okay cool yeah I think this looks good uh, probably there is like some kind of small mistake uh, import button used okay blank line okay uh, and then line is too long. Uh, okay, no more problems. Uh, Gustavo TXC, thank you for following. Okay, uh, we have all of this. Uh, do I miss anything? Write to dear. I think I still need some, yeah, I, I still want to create this random data. So I uh, will say random data is equal to utils create random data. Okay. And then for every device, we are go also going to do this. We are going to say uh, Oh, why am I editing it here? Uh, I need to add it here. Ok, 
Okay, cool. So we do this random data, yeah, and then we have to just write this data to the disk. I would say okay from PQ RST from pass sleep import pass. Okay, this open dear pass and this is going to be what host wars device name YAML SF uh, YAML dump random data. Oh shit. Oh no. Interesting. Yeah, I am not correct here. Mm -mm. When I'm writing this to an appropriate Well, to be fair, it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, I, th I think I can just keep it like this. Uh, I would just have to deal with it in the code. It's not that big of a deal, I think. Uh, yep. I think this could work, but let's just try this. So poetry. Oh, I need to create a script which does this, yes. Um, And I think there was one more mistake. Oh no, I, I fixed it. Okay. But this may work or with some small modifications. So scripts, uh, build inventories, yeah. Got an expected keyword argument, random data. What the hell? Uh, in lab build inventory random data true. Uh, where is this? Okay, yeah, this one. Let's go again. Uh, app util says no attribute create random data. Uh, excuse me. Oh, oh, okay. Go again. No such file. Uh, I forgot write, of course. I forgot write. Uh, okay. 
go once again. Okay, it's taking some time. Unhatchable type dict. Uh, interesting. Nor near line 99. Okay, so first of all, this created a bunch of things already. Or it didn't. Oh, it didn't. Ah, uh, god damn it. No near inventory. Oh yeah, we have it here. So first of all, I have these things uh, with random data, but we are still missing the inventory itself. Uh, okay. There are some questions in the chat. Is Poland an upgrade or downgrade from Ukraine? I would say upgrade. What are you coding? I'm trying to create an inventory for Nornir, which is network automation tool. So uh, this is kind of like a preparation for this. I need to be to build an inventory for my lab in order to use the tool. Um, and because we have so many devices, which is 500, then I can just do it manually. It will just take too much time. Okay, and hashable type dict. Why is this happening? Um, Unhashable type dict. Why are you telling me that it's unhashable type? Oh, F me. Please, F in the chat. Uh, yeah, this should have host.name like this, and then. Wait, actually, hold on. Uh, Hmm. Okay, host that name and then group name, uh, group dump. Yep. Okay, this could work. No such file. Uh, of, of course, I keep forgetting that I need to write to the file, not read to the file. Uh, in here as well. Okay, let's go ahead and run this. Dict has no object dump. Okay, this is new. Uh, why is this happening? Well, default should be an inventory element. And I, yeah, I didn't create it. I did not create it, so... Hmm. Okay, hold on. The correct way to deal with this is the following. Okay, and then here I can say Nornir defaults, and then Nornir defaults. So if I look on my Nornir defaults, uh, I have this. These are standard parameters. So defaults is Nornir defaults from this. 
Okay, and we need to modify the inventory. Okay. And then this will have dump. Okay, this may work. Dict is a hash or radio hash map. Uh, don't you think you can put dictionary as a key in Python for another dict? Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks, folks. Um, I was, yeah, I was creating dictionary incorrect. Why upgrade? You have great bitches in Ukraine like Crimea. Um, I'm sorry, Liv, I, I'm not really interested in talking about that. I like where I am in Poland and I prefer to stay here. Uh, okay, I think we are done. You just need to take a look that it's correct. Okay, uh, where is this here? Yep. So we need to have a group YAML. Okay, we have core and then switch, which is in the groups. I'm curious why this is, um, Why it's ordered this weird way? Because I didn't order it in any way, a anywhere. Very interesting. I mean, I can see that, I mean, this name is in this way, but still like, okay, I, I, I can't be bothered, it's just, it's just weird. Okay, we are missing some parts here. Uh, we are missing the host name, so let me go ahead and fix this. Uh, so this will be... Hostname. Hostname is equal to device management IP. Cool. Okay, and then I will run this. Command it, accept my invitation on LinkedIn. More scope for me to pick your brain. Uh, I'm sorry, there are a lot of invitations on LinkedIn and I I don't have time to go through all of them. It's really interesting that, okay, so this is built. Um, this order of course here is correct, but the way they appear in the YAML is not correct. I'm wondering why that is, why it's the case. Behave. Thank you for for following. Oh, for subscription. Thank you so much, man. Um, Breakpoint. I don't like YAML. Me neither. Me neither. I absolutely hate it. Um, this really freaking bothers me. Inventory costs. I mean, this order in dictionary is completely fine, but when I dump it to a file, it's just garbage. Uh,
this is correct order but then when I look on the file this is bullshit order Why the hell is this happening? This is correct order. I'm thinking is because because of this. But I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I will dump do some sorting default flow style false. They're sorted by key string it appears. So we just confirmed that it's not sorted in the order as string appears. I do believe that it's somehow connected to the flow default flow style. Um, I missed it how you're writing to the file. Oh why do I have it here? Hold on. Uh, let me double check. Okay. Okay, so uh, Rommel safe dumper. So what is his question mark? Rommel YAML. Okay, so it seems like this is connected to the um, to the um, default dumper. So I usually use uh, type save because this allows you to be. But this really only matters when you load, not when you dump. So and when I was using this, we had this problem. When I just got rid of it, then it was fine. Um, probably need to have three digit number in the news of uh, fun behave no that's not the case because python 37 by default keeps the insertion in insertion order so i was doing it is like r1 r2 r3 and so forth so that one was fine it should not sort keys just because it wants to um maybe somehow windows sorting in the name no it's also not the case so yeah, so it seems like this is a problem with this type save. Uh, I don't have a lot of time to troubleshoot it. There are some suggestions to use order dict here. I also don't want to do that. Um, but it seems like once I deleted this thing, then my um, my order is now correct. So yeah, if I look here, we have core one, switch one, switch two, core two, switch three, switch four and host is like correctly ordered. Right, I think we are good here. Um, I think, yeah, this this is all looks good. We now need to create a config YAML file for Nornir and then actually write Nornir. Um, so when I will be doing this, I will be using some of my reference material um, because I do have like my preferred defaults which I would like to use. Uh, let me think how I can get it easily. 
And I want to have double spaces. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, now work your stand. Okay, so we will be changing this. Uh, I am thinking of in Nornir, we can rewrite all of these things via environmental variables but i don't remember on top of my head how you do this uh, oh okay cool i can use this no unicorn no work is okay so we will be changing this on the CLI non workers race on error true. Um, I don't think I need this, so I don't need it to crash. I do want to disable logging, I want to use standard plugin, and yeah, this the rest is the same. Okay, cool. So Cool, very cool. Um, <laughs> okay, so we need to create a, the easy script, yeah. So our script is going to collect outputs from from devices and then save them to a file. Um, and I want it to be like almost exact copy of Ansible. So how do we do this? Let me think. And first we'll start with 50, yeah. Uh, I, can, I can create script gather commands, I guess. Okay, let's go. Def uh, main is equal to whatever. Uh, and def um, if name is equal to main. Uh, pass. I want to have a login dict. So I will create here file called constants py. We will copy logging dictionary. I see some of your comments. I will address them in just a second. Uh, I feel like you know I I got the flow. So like while I have it, I want to get done as much as I can. Uh, just give me a couple of minutes and I will address all of this, what is happening in the chat. Okay, I copied this. We'll have to modify some of these things, but we can do it later. Uh, we will import logging config. Uh, he will say main and we will configure logging. Um, config. Uh, I have to from constants import login dict and I say login dict. Uh, okay, then from nor near um, import in nor near. Wait, did we change? Did we change it? I don't think we did. Oh, I know what this is. Okay, uh, let me save this um, and address comments in the chat. Uh, okay, I think uh, 3.8 does it. You have 3.7. No, it's not correct. 
So uh, in uh, Python says um, inser insertion order in the dictionary since 3.6 unofficially and three, uh, since 3.7 as part of the uh, standard. Maybe YAML things makes it different. It's just, it seems like it's just the problem is the safe dumper that they're using. I go to sleep, we'll watch the recording, keep up the great work. Thank you so much. To know how to reduce the visible line number column in VS Code. I, I mean, not on top of my head, but you can check it out somewhere in the docs. I think at some point I did that. Um, cool, I've been using order dict in 37. So yeah, in in oh, in three six. So in three six, it's this already default behavior. It's just kind of like not documented. Uh, well, yeah, implementation it also you, like you can't really rely on that. Uh, okay, here is an issue that we need to solve. Um, I need to connect to this host again. Actually, hmm. what is this? Hello? And work spins open folder. God damn it. Uh, for is this file untitled? I just want to make sure I don't lose anything. Yeah, this one. I don't use this one. Did it open a new? No, it didn't. Okay. Uh, is it just by default or yeah it's by default. Yep. Okay, cool. Uh I need to select a Python in uh, sorry, Python interpreter settings workspace uh Python uh hmm. Okay, I think this will be enough. 
Where is my script though? Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Python is not installed. What do you mean? should work yep okay now this is working okay um, let me refer to again my things here uh, or you know I, I should be able to remember it like this by heart uh, oh have all of our things so it should be fine okay uh, flake is not installed um, check if I say breakpoint okay so this is going to be Python gather commands in our hosts uh, in our inventory hosts okay so it's very good that I can see that it loaded correctly. Oops, uh, in our inventory groups. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so our first test is going to be um, in our switch one is going to be in our filter. And we will say from nor near core filter import f and our filter is going to be f um, has parent group I think um, and the group is going to be called switch one so all devices connected to switch one and then we will do breakpoint again uh, let's run this. So if I say in our um, switch one uh, inventory hosts, I should see 50 of them, which I do. So all of this is working fine. Um, I would even call like this. Cool. So we have filtering in place. Uh, you are on remote host. Yes, I'm on remote host. So now we have to create our function, which will be, well, our task, yes, task gather commands. Um, we will put commands here, and it's very important that I use the same commands as I use for Ansible. So, where they are. So we need this command list.
Excuse me? How does... No. Um, how does co column select works? Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, mm -hmm. Ah, it's a shame when um, some of your uh, hotkeys are not working the same on different platforms. Okay, so this is this is my commands. Um, Guess a commands. So this is going to be task. It should accept commands list. Which is going to be list of str. We will say um, from typing import list. Uh, this task will not return anything. Uh, do we need anything else? Uh, you just need command list. No, we don't need anything else. So what we will do is for command. Oh, we need to import the Nornir task from Nornir tasks uh, plugins. Plugins tasks uh, networking. Networking import. Let me consent command. So we will say for command in commands, we will say that output is um, task.run, task is equal to net micro send command, uh, command, was it command string? Uh, let me check the docs for this. Nor near, nor near, nor near, nor near. Plugins, tasks, networking, uh, netmiko, send command, command string. Okay, so command string is equal to command. Um, this is going to be our output. Or actually, this is a result. And then we have to write it to a file. Uh, and I want to count. I want to do exactly like I have already. Yeah. Like in one of my script. Okay. Another thing we need to do is we have to open the file. So we will say, uh, we will open the file in the output. Um, task host name uh, .txt. Uh, as uh, for writing as f and then for every command we'll write to the file command and then output um, this is going to be result dot result yep like this uh, Okay, this is gather command, this is our task. What else are we missing? I don't think we're missing anything. So, um, Stupak, good content. Thank you. Uh, all right, is this all? I feel like, yes.
so we will ha just have to say nr switch one um, run task is equal to gather commands and then uh, commands is equal to commands yeah I think this is all we need here uh, and then we save it uh, why is this is complaining undefined name command undefined name command oh yeah cool um, yeah I think this is pretty much it folks so like you know just so you know this Nornier script do the same thing as Ansible is literally five lines here and I would say three lines here yes because logging doesn't count so three lines here and then four lines here well, let's do five yeah so like eight lines of code okay um, yeah I think this is good and I think we can run this uh, so I will say Python gather commands yeah and I will need to check uh, one thing that we will try doing I have only 10 workers, so this is not not great. Are you live coding over SSH? Yes, I'm live coding over SSH. Okay, so this is finished. And we have like show version, output from show version, show up interface brief, show interfaces. Um, Show memory statistics, sharp, show IP route, cool. So this was for 10, 10 workers. So the way we are going to do this, we have to like craft our command a little bit more carefully. So first I would like to uh, Yeah, I need to have this. Uh, so first we'll be deleting all of our uh, results and then we will be controlling user uh, using the configuration nor near core non workers yep um, and we'll do this and then we'll say Python gather commands okay so and we also need to time this yeah so we will say like this time and let's again start with 10 and see how this changes uh, parse error in your time interesting
Okay, so it took uh, 46 seconds, quite a long time to be honest. Um, 46 seconds. I'm curious why I can't set it here. Oh, okay, it's working this way. Cool. So with 50 workers, it took uh, 13 seconds. 13.4. Okay. This is very cool that I can control it using environmental variables. Um, it doesn't make sense uh, to do it more because we only have 50 hosts. So I think the next tax, uh, test is going to be with um, our standard inventory, yes. So... Uh, So one problem with both async IO and Nornir um, that we can see or we can't see. For some reason I can't see it right now. What? What the hell is going on? Uh, folks, I am confused. The reason I'm confused is that we can see these Python gather commands with different PIDs. But those are not supposed to be forks. Ah, it finished. Okay, uh, so this took one minute, 46 uh, seconds. Uh, let me run with 100 workers now. And also let's actually see, right, that output worked. So let's say on this router, yeah. To be honest, I am not sure what's going on. Um, because I expect completely different picture. Okay, the output is fine. Yeah, so all of this is fine, but... Hmm. Weird. Okay, I will run it. Probably like I actually don't understand threads as good as I thought I was understanding them. Um, let me run this first. Okay. 
So I was looking for 100% CPU load on a single core. But it doesn't seem this is what is happening. I Why I see the same thing as different PIDs? That doesn't make any sense to me. But here I have only single process. Threads are good for multi-core. But here's the thing, Python Python doesn't Python doesn't do it um, against multiple cores. Again, unless I am misunderstanding something. You do Python doesn't do multi-core unless you specifically use multi-processing. So if you just use threads because of gil, we are we sh this is not what I'm supposed to see, uh, guys, to be honest. Just put threads on random core. Oh, okay, this is what I was supposed to see, yeah. But then it instantly disappeared. It just puts threats on random corn. I am 95% positive that is not what is happening. Um, and we are actually started to have dang, some issues here. Um, interesting. Search. Oh yeah, yeah. This. God damn it! I have to. I have to fix this. Shit. Um. How do you fix this? Yeah, we will say expect. String is um, <laughs> I'm not sure I can troubleshoot it with debugger. Give me one second. Um, What the hell? I am so confused. Um, okay, this will make it slightly better.
Okay, I can see here load on on CPU. I don't understand this. Too much text. I need TLDR. This should not happen. I'm wondering why it does. Oh, by the way, it, it finished without issues. Okay. If we have any folks who know internals of C Python. I would really appreciate your insight here because this is not the picture I expected to see. Completely not this. I was expecting to see 100% on one core and that's it. I'm even started to think that I should go back to triple check we are actually using threads. I mean, we should be using threads in the Nornier. But then I see PIDs different, which is weird. And then I see that different cores are loaded, which is also weird. Okay, let's run this again. We need to find like optimal number. Yeah, I mean, this is some kind of BS. Okay, there was like one core of 100% at some point, but then all this rest, the rest is just weird. And we start engaging exceptions. Oh, and I am an idiot. Oh guys, I am, I am a big moron because we need to be to close connections and I don't close connections. If you don't close connections, weird things will happen. God damn, and everything is failing.
Yeah, we can't even open connection here. Uh, let me log into one of these devices to see what's going on. I mean, lines are fine. I'm going right now to the um, nor near core. Only one thread can actually execute CPU bound task at the time. Fully utilizing CPU. Okay, I just keep not understanding what is going on. <laughs> this is so weird.
Like how this can happen? I'm actually thinking to rewrite the whole thing but this will be off the stream I really need to understand this I'm thinking of rewriting using threads without Nornir because what I see doesn't make any sense to me and also it, this keeps failing for some reason why does it fail I just don't know unable to find prompt Let's do some sleep. I clearly remember when we were, um, this also keeps failing, unable to find prompt. On session establishment. Okay, let's say router 100. It has some issue. This is five one. One seven. Oh, oops. I am very interested to see the session but this is not as easy as you think it is to see the session
Yeah, with smaller number of workers, it works so much better. Actually, I think I can remove this time slip. Yeah, I will not be able to sleep at night looking at this. This is just the weirdest thing ever. is done by the way oh uh, one minute well this was with the uh, time slip one so let's just kind of like write this down but i will rerun it without that slip let's rerun this i honestly thinking maybe i should even write threading version directly on the on the stream I mean, it should not take that much, that long. But the fact that I see this just, I don't understand this output. I don't understand like how all of my cores can go to like 10% or 20% when I'm using a single thread. And then I have all these forks Okay, this seems to be fine. Okay, so the part where I see all these like a separate processes seems to be fine. But the fact that the core load is weird, that's, that's okay. I would just leave it be. Okay, so without time sleep, it's one minute, 18 seconds. Let's do 90 workers. Uh, we could, meanwhile, try to compare this with Ansible.
Okay, so this is the time we got in Ansible. Um, so this one were completely not stable. So we can't use those results. This one was stable. So around five minutes, 32 seconds on average. And in Nornier, it's uh, one minute, 12 seconds. Actually very interesting that this number of workers 90, it's almost like the same as uh, with uh, 100. Uh, let's actually run it with like 85 and try to find a sweet spot. So if you take 532 yes and we will compare it to 112. Um, Okay, so we have 560 plus 32, so 330 seconds. We are deleting this or uh, dividing, deleting this, dividing this by 72 seconds, yes. Okay, so we have, just by using Nornier, we get around 4.6 increase. Uh, another thing that this also quite important can i need a stop asap another thing that we are around one gigabyte of ram with um with ansible at 10 forks it was maximum memory so maximum memory versus one gig and the runtime is far uh, 4.6 times faster Okay, so with 85 workers, it's uh, it's actually uh, higher. Let's try one more time with 95. Like, I don't want to get to like an exact number, but five-ish should be fine. And we also need to do configuration. and also big inventory. Interesting. So this is around the same. So it seems like 90 workers is uh, is like decent. Yep. So we will keep uh, working with uh, 90 workers. So let's get 90. Okay. The so next thing that I want to check is big inventory. And we need to make some changes. And I need to find a plugin which we have for loading some additional data. Think it was files. No, it's not files. What is it then? 
text. No, I don't think it's text. API. Is it just functions? Mm -mm. API commands. No. Data, yeah, data. Uh, data load YAML, loads YAML file. Okay. Um, so the way it should work will be so from plugin task data load YAML. Uh, yes. From task from Nornier plugins tasks data import oh form from the import load yaml okay then this one um load var load data and this will be boolean and by default it's going to be false he will say um data is equal to task run load yaml my file txt this should be inventory uh host wars um task host name yaml i think this is correct Okay, and you'll say if load data, yes, then uh, data result, and then you'll say Well, I don't need to do anything with this data. I just have to load it, to be fair. Uh, yeah. I am not doing anything with this result. I'm just loading it to the memory. Okay. And here I will say load data true okay so exactly the same thing but now we have to load every one of these files uh, but tell me why whenever I hear a game dev I think of all plain looking sizable white male with minimal hair on top of their head and neck beard I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, takes two positional arguments, but three was given. Three were given. Uh, why? Oh, ouch. Okay, this should take more memory. If it doesn't take more memory, then and if it takes small uh, less time, then we have something wrong here. I'm curious to see if 
Oh, we are using save here, okay. So save should be faster. Okay, so I expect... Oh, shit. Interesting how... Well, it only failed on one host, by the way, or on two hosts. Not that bad. Let's run it one more time. Still failing. Interesting. Eighty-three, seventy-three, ninety. Again, not that many. Uh, let's uh, decrease number of. Oh, it still it still keeps running. Okay. Meanwhile, what I can do is uh... Okay, so whenever we are loading, even if there are failures, actually it's not that big of a deal um, Like there are ways to deal with failures. We see 10 seconds increase uh, in the in this thing, uh, let me also run it with lower number. Oh, actually, I was supposed to run with 90. Um, so this took with 95 workers, even if there are like, there were like three failures, it, it's fine. Um, 122 seconds, yeah, so 10 seconds more. If I go to my Ansible results here, so this big inventory, I had to in decrease number of workers significantly because otherwise it would crash. And then it took nine minutes, nine minutes total. So nine minutes compared to 122. So let's say nine by 60 plus 9 we divide by uh, 60 plus 22 is 82 seconds so then we see 6.7 times in, uh, increasing in the running speed plus also we were always running out of memory with small number of forks on big inventory which also didn't help our case um, Okay, okay, this 90 is actually is taking even less. It's taking this amount without crashes, by the way. So that's that's very decent. So even though we have we had to load all of these variables, right? It like it just extra seven seconds. It's fine. Okay, so this was um, 
This was gather commands. We'll do one more test and then we will wrap up. I'm a little bit tired. Um, let's write to a file. We will do now configuration. Um, we can copy the script. And I need to do exactly the same thing as we did before. So I will need templates. Yes, let's do a folder called templates. Uh, I need uh, config j2. We'll copy this piece uh, from Ansible. So, so that we do exactly the same thing. Well, almost exactly the same thing. Template config j2. Uh, let me copy all of this. Uh, we now will do. Yeah, we'll have to change this slightly. So configured by uh, Nornier. Testing Nornier performance. Let's do it with caps. And here we'll have to change these variables. So here we'll say um, host dot uh, hostname. This is going to be IP address. Testing performance on host.name. If random is defined, if host um, if host random is defined, then we will say host random. Yep, this is pretty much it. So then we have to change this. We will have to say um, well, actually, hold on. Uh, where is this? This template. I would say if um, ra random data is defined, then we will just say random data. Okay, cool. So we have this. Now we have to change this uh, thing. So we don't need this anymore. I still need this piece. Don't, I don't need this. I just need to use. Well, first, I need to build the config. Uh, for that, I need to use a plugin. No. Plugins. Tasks. Was it files? No. It was text. Yeah, it was text. And then renders contents of a file with change all host template. <laughs> we have to use this thing, text template. So 
here we will networking is going to be in that Miko send command uh, from Nornir plugins tasks and then was it text? It was text, yeah. Import template file. Okay. So config is going to be equal to template file uh, task.run task is equal to template file um, I really need example for this pass pass to dearest templates file name okay so this should be file should be uh, config j2 um, then Pass should be uh, templates. Yep. And then. Oh, and then I need to pass things. Yes, so I need to say host is equal to task host. And he will say if not random data then none uh, I need to change this if random data uh, random data random data none and then uh, random data is equal to none uh, to random data excuse me Okay, so this is CFG, and then the next thing is apply the CMG, yes. So this is going to be result is equal to task.run. Task is equal to netmiko uh, send config. Netmiko send config. Uh, here I need to be careful networking let me go configure send config so config commands or config file I think it's config commands and it should uh, work if I say CFG. Okay, so here I should say dot result. Here I say CMG. And yeah, this is pretty much it. So let's just take a look at this logic again. So if we have this argument, if we are loading extra data, we will go and load these things. Um, then we will take random data. We will take just the first element, the same thing as we did with Ansible. If you don't load the data, this one is going to be uh, none. Next piece is CFG. Uh, CFG is running template file, config j2 templates, uh, host is ta task host, and then random data is equal to this. Fine. Dot result. Cool. Um, and then the last piece is task.run let me send config and config commands is just cmg uh, cfg right uh, this looks good then this configure is going here and I would say so first we'll run it on like 50 to be safe. Configure. Yeah, I think just configure. Uh, we don't have commands. And this load data is going to be equal to false. Okay.
this is pretty much it. Yeah, I, uh, it looks fine. There could be some issues, but whatever. Um, yeah, let's just run this. And the way we test this, we can log in to one of the devices. Uh, let's say 0, 50. Mm, yeah, 50, 50 should be fine. Okay, so here I have a device router uh, 33s. And so if I say show interface status, show interface status, yep. status. Oh, it's only on the switch, yeah. Show interface description. Okay, no description. Uh, so we will, well, for this test, I don't need to delete my output. Uh, you'll say configure, yeah. Um, and we only do it on 50 devices. Uh, okay, so something is incorrect. No near subtask error. Interesting. Uh, let me cancel this login. Interesting. Logs do not see anything. Am I even running correct file? Yeah. This correct file. I don't need this. Okay, folks, I don't see a problem. <laughs> That's very bad. This could be thing host is equal to task dot host. How is my template specified here? Okay, I feel like a dummy dumb. I, I can't figure out subtask failed so not only it failed but where is um where are the logs for that so like okay you you are failing but
Okay, I think I need to do the following. Um, okay, I need to also add this. Oh, ouch. Template file missing one required positional argument template. Positional argument template. Template file name. Oh boy. Oh ho ho. Okay. Dummy dumb. Okay, let's run this. Okay, so what should change is that, well, first there should be a log message saying that there was some config uh, in its failing. Fail to exit configuration mode. Oh wow. Is there is exit config mode false. Um, which I want to use. Okay, let's run this. Still failing. Uh, what the hell? <laughs> Failed to exit config mode. Let the stream will have to have it in the background. Family day. Hope all is going well. Yeah, thank you. It seems to be fine. There are some issues here which are weird, but overall it's fine. Oh, actually, I think it worked fine. Oh, let me see. Thirty three. 33, where did it fail? It failed on configuration, failed to exit configuration mode. Okay, only on router 5 and on router 31, 41. 13, well, on a bunch of them, 
to be honest. <sighs> Interesting. Where is my Junto template? I would add like an extra Maybe I should adjust this a little bit. Uh, yeah, let's put delay factor a little bit higher. Here, right? Oh! Wait, oh, wait a second, it should be here. I'm an idiot. Okay, let's see around this. I would still increase delay factor to be honest. Okay, now this is so much better. Okay. So, um, twenty seconds, yes, on fifty devices. Um, Twelve, twenty point three. Okay, so around like ten seconds more than gathering commands. So let's now not do, let's not do filtering and try again. Hi Dmitry from Spain, what are you doing? Um, I have, I have a very big lab here with uh, 500 routers and I'm using different tools, network automation tools like Ansible, Nornir and some other things to test their performance on such a big network. And I'm documenting that for a future blog article. It involves a lot of code. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think I'm ready to run this. Okay, if you will start seeing failures, I made I will add here delay factor. Sure, no problem. Uh, I will add a delay here when we are doing configuration, and we are actually seeing enable to find prompt, and it fails. Is it fails on opening connection? Send config. Plugin. Yeah, it fails on opening connection. That's very sad. Hmm. Yeah, this. I always hate this when I have to like tune these different like timers with SSH and stuff like that. Because by default, it just doesn't doesn't perform the way I want it to perform. Um, I am thinking there should be some kind of timeout in NetMiko. Um,
Okay. Session timeout is 60, timeout is 100. I mean, those are decent timeouts. Uh, I don't know what blocking timeout means. Uh, okay, I am not really interested in debugging it much. The only thing I can do here is do delay factor 2 um, and rerun this again. Um, there are some failures, like you need to make an effort to make it work 100%. I'm actually curious why. This shows me HTD out though. Hmm. Is it too many connections to one genetic server? I don't think so. Right now I have 95 workers. This is not too many. And again, it's not about Gina 3 server right now. We are just connecting YSSH to devices themselves. Okay, uh, there are still some issues here. Uh, let me write to my report. Wait, hold on. What is this? Oh, yeah, those are not valid. Uh, so we can put here point nine. Unable to find prompt on the connection itself. I'm thinking if there's like an easy way to to resolve this. I don't see an easy way. Like probably tuning timeouts would make sense. Okay, and they're failing on opening connection though. Timeout connection, timeout, so timeout for parallel requests, binary timeout. Are many devices affected by this problem? Okay, 195, 95, 96, 90, 94, 90. Not many, to be honest. Not that big of a deal. I guess I would still need to adjust timeout. Connection timeout. The person is also running on using Narnia.
game. I'm thinking of doing one or, of two things. In decreasing number of connections. One. And two, try playing with timeouts. But I am not sure which timeout should I touch. Okay, again, we are out of 500 devices. We are failing on 90, 94, 90, 94, 96, 195, 195. And what is the number? I mean, oh, I'm using 95. Okay, so let's do 90. Let's do 90 first. Okay. And the result that should be is that our interface description should be configured by Nornir and show banner MOTD should be like this, yeah. Okay, so let's take a look on this one. By the way, folks, if you're using that Miko and you're using send command anywhere, I strongly encourage you to do expect string. Just, I'm uh, st still failing. 180, 173. I feel like I will need to change. I feel like I will need to change some of these things and I really don't want to. Like timeout. Time out 200, for example, oh, or 150. What is fast CLI doing, by the way? Hmm. Or, you know what, folks? If it's failing on only a couple of devices, who freaking cares? I'm thinking like, I mean, if it's failing, it's failing on a couple of devices. Like for the big picture, it doesn't matter that much. Or actually does. Does it mean for bigger picture? Or it doesn't? Um, It's failing like on three or four devices. And um, yeah, actually it could matter because, yeah, it could matter. Uh, let me try 85. Because if there is some problem, it will wait for the whole timeout. It just keep, keeps failing on some of these devices. Okay, now we have socket timeout. Wow. Okay. Time out reading channel. Data not available.
Oh, it doesn't seem to be failing right now. That's some good news, finally. Okay, when we will be comparing these results, um, where is my report? This one was 6 minutes 32 seconds. Right now we are looking at around like 2 minutes something. This doesn't seem to be good. Uh, I think it should finish. I don't know. Yeah, so two minutes, 19 seconds. Point one. Okay. No failures. Okay, so when we are comparing these two Ansible, yeah, so two minutes, 19 seconds, it's what? One. 39 yes it's 139 uh, in ansible ansible configuration provisioning 10 linear was six minutes 32 seconds so six minutes uh, Six by sixty plus thirty two. Yes, delete by one twenty one thirty nine. Okay, now we are looking at two point eight times increase in one year when you are doing this. Okay, I would like to run the last test and then I'm quite tired today, so we'll wrap up. Um, And I also do it with 85 workers because it seems to be like the most stable one. So we will only change this from false to true. Um, so we load this random data and let's see how my set changes our results. I think it will take just again 10 seconds more, so around uh, 2 minutes 30 seconds. Okay, there are some issues here. Delay factor, unable to find prompt. I will not be troubleshooting this. Um, is there a way to specify prompt?
Okay, so it failed on 144. Oh, only on one device. It felt only on one device. Okay. Uh, oh, god damn it. So it took two minutes, uh, 28 seconds. Two minutes, uh, 28 seconds. So increase here is around like 10 extra seconds. While in Ansible, it also led to a very increased number of uh, um, RAM usage. Okay, so way we test this, if I exit here, yeah, and then we see this random data on the console, show banner, MOTG. Cool. Um, yeah, I think of, I think we are good, and I will wrap up now. So we are kind of like finished testing with Nornir. Um, one, yeah. Let, let me let me discuss some of this in the in the wrap up. There are some questions in the chat. Is this hobby of yours, or is it something you're doing to put on your resume? I would say hobby. Uh, I mean, my expertise in network automation, so I do write code, but um, in this particular case, the reason I'm doing this project is I want to write a blog article explaining why people should not use Ansible. This is my ultimate goal. Um, and one big step towards it is sharing the numbers. This is what, what, why I'm doing it. Uh, this is not for my resume. Um, in resume, the only thing I say is more or less network automation engineer. This is what I say there. All right, folks, if you still have any questions, do let me know in the chat. Meanwhile, we'll be uh, moving to the wrap up portion of this video. And I think uh, I would like to start my wrap up today about impressions of like how you work with Nornir on like, you know, more or less big network uh, and like some of my observations. So first of all, if you open, for example, this gather commands, um, this code here to do some basic operations with network devices from Nornir is super straightforward. Uh, for people saying that you need to be like Python expert to be able to do this or blah, 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 whatever, Ansible is so much easier. I disagree with you. Like there is nothing which is like more complex than your the basic Python knowledge to be able to do this. Um, another thing is that very simple things like out, uh, uh, formatting the output, right? For example, here in the output, I wanted to write as a file in this form where I say command, output, command, output, command, output. Doing even such a simple thing in Ansible is quite hard. So if I go to, um, if I go to Ansible gather commands, so this is equivalent Ansible script, more or less. So it takes almost the same amount of lines. I mean, some of these lines are formatting. Uh, this part is not relevant to Ansible. Um, pretty much what is relevant is this and this. Uh, it's not that much. Um, Harder. However, even as even in such small program, something like this, right, compared to something like this, is very apparent. Like how much freedom you get with Python. For example, here I was trying to do this 
like command output command output command output and if you were on that stream like we didn't manage to get it in exact same format i was able to get close but not exactly the same and even in this case like try understanding this if you are not like python developer like we uh, we are taking outputs and we are applying zip then we flat and then we join like is it that much easier to read i don't think so not only that you lose all of the um ID completion, all of this, like, you know, checks, linting, blah, 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 whatever. You have to, like, have exact syntax at hand to be able to write this down. Now, here, this whole thing that I'm trying to do here was pretty much achieved by this F write and then the format in which I'm trying to write this. So, like, so much more freedom. So, this is the first thing. So, my personal opinion is that Yes, writing something like this requires some Python knowledge, but the level of this knowledge is uh, quite low. Like you don't need to be an expert or anything to be able to write this program. Uh, and I was able to write this much faster than I was. Um, then I wrote the Ansible playbook and troubleshooting. So this is my first point. Um, second thing is um let me think what exactly i want to talk about here well second thing is obviously the runtime so we have this um we have this result and let's say on like uh in ornier all of these programs didn't take a lot of memory space um but in Ansible, whenever you have a big inventory, a big number of forks, or a lot of data in your inventory, the amount of RAM consumed is really, really big. Um, in, in terms of number of forks, I wouldn't even call it linear. It's like, it's much faster growth of memory than linear. Uh, in Nornier, like, we don't, didn't have any memory pressure at all. So if you look on some comparable numbers and in stable case with Ansible 500 devices, it was this number, five minutes, 32 seconds for uh, command gathering uh, using 10 forks and linear strategy. The comparable number in Nornier would be this, yes? At 90 workers, we hit one minute, 12 seconds. So already you have increased, and I think I was, uh, you know, doing it, calculating it. Uh, I think it was like five times or something, or maybe like four times something. Um, so yeah, then another thing, when you have extended inventory with all these host virus files, uh, the only thing changes for Nornir is that we add extra 10 seconds to the runtime like extra 10 seconds here, even less than 10 seconds, like seven seconds. And in case of Ansible, we use so much more memory that we have to decrease number of forks, otherwise it will just keep crashing, resulting in number of uh, nine minutes now. So nine minutes compared to one minute, 90 seconds. I think we, it was around six times or something. So. Your big inventory results in very big around consumption by Ansible. But even if we have like similar playing fields, we still have like four times increase or something. Now, when we are looking at, uh, in, in terms of config provisioning, this is where it seems like our Nornier script didn't perform as well as I thought it would be. Um, at 85 workers, they, it took 12, uh, 2 minutes 19 seconds, while in Ansible it took 6 minutes uh, 32 seconds, so around 3 times. I mean, it was still faster, but the, the multiplier is much less. Um, so this is like on positive side from Nornir. Now another thing, actually comparing to Unsync IO script, which we did last time, um, here, 
we were having 500 devices with semaphore and semaphore controls number of simultaneous connections kind of like number of workers 80 and uh, i did only con config gathering it took 56 seconds so 56 seconds compared to uh like one minute 12 seconds so i would say it's very close However, their idea was that, and we didn't have time today, uh, what we found when we were using a single IO, it was using only a single core uh, to 100%. So I'm thinking if I take this script and I just do multi-processing, this, this time should decrease significantly. Um, unfortunately, at this point, I cannot I cannot confirm or deny if I think IO is really faster than nor near like in times two or times three or something times. Um, and one of the big reasons why is that we actually don't have the network big enough to be able to observe this kind of difference. So if you think about Python, when you increase number of threads, the like overhead of threads um, of like number of threads becomes apparent a little bit more faster than these async IO tasks because async IO tasks are really lightweight, they barely have any overhead. So like the total number of tasks that you can do in async IO is bigger, but on the network with 500 nodes, we, we probably will not be able to see this difference as significant. Uh, another observation that I have is um, around the con resource consumption in Nornir and this is something that is bugging me and I'm not sure why I'm not sure why it's happening so while we were running our Nornir scripts I was able to see a number of like copies of Python kind of like forks but they are not they can be forks because we we definitely using threads in in Nornir. Another, I mean that part I think I understand is that even if it's threads, you will see them as a, like different things in HTOP. But another thing which was even more weird was the CPU resources um, consumption. We were able to see uh, distribution of those threads among the cores. And this should not happen because Python uses, uses GIL, which is global interpreter log. We should be able to see load only a single core, unless I'm misunderstanding how, how everything really works. So this part really bugs me. Like, I don't know the answer for that. Uh, I need to do some more testing and consult with people who are much better in Python threading than I am. But this was something that I did not expect. Like, why do we have a load distributed between cores and not a load on a single core? Um, so that part is weird. Now, another thing that was I would write to like problems with Nornir. It, it's not even Nornir issue here, but um, and I'm sorry, Kirk, that I'm saying this on the stream, but. Um, I would want that Miko to be more reliable. And I'm not sure like what is causing the issues here exactly. Uh, but I don't see like, you know, to be, to. I'm sorry folks, I'm just trying to, you know, uh, to formulate my thought here. What I want is to be able to um, achieve reliable results with as little config settings as I can and I was playing with some of these and even that was not enough to make my script 100% reliable so this is something that bugs me like you have to play a lot with timeouts and stuff like that and I feel like it's missing some of the things which um, 
which would make it reliable. I don't know. Like, I don't really know what all of these settings mean in NetMiko. For example, when we were using Gather commands, I already had, like, in my previous experience, if you really want to make it reliable, you always need to use expect string, which makes sense to me. Um, I feel like NetMiko does a little bit more magic than in shoot in some cases. For example, when you establish the connection uh, using NetMiko to a network device, uh, it will try finding the prompt on its own. What I think would be better is if I specify a prompt on my own saying, okay, uh, when I'm connecting to the device, you know, this function connect, connect hand, handle, yeah. When I do this, I expected prompt, expected uh, prompt should be R1 this, yes, or maybe even regex or something. Um, but I don't have this option and this really bugs me. The reason I understand like high level reasons why this happens is like SSH is just not reliable media to do any kind of programmatic tasks. When we are looking on SSH protocol, right? So when I'm connected to the device, uh, technically SSH doesn't have any anything in the standard saying when you do show version, yes, what is the um, uh, what is the um, marker, right? That the output from this command is done, right? This is a very big problem with SSH based automation. So, like, I do this show version. How do I know that output from this command is done? Right? This is, uh, and the way that Miko does is the following it tries to find a prompt which starts with some text and this symbol, and then it says, yes, this is where, where the output ended. But all of this is kind of weird, right? It would be even more weird if, for example, in banner, if you have in banner, R33 hash, if you have this in banner, then all of your automation will just break completely because whenever NetMiko will see in the buffer R33 hash, yeah, it will say, oh, this is the end of this output, but it's not, right? So this is in general, the problem is SSH automation. Um, for example, we have this protocol called NetConf, yes? And NetConf RFC defines a very specific uh, marker for all of the messages. So um, if I say NetConf Young RFC, I can't find it. Should it be here? So I already don't remember 100% what the marker is. Yeah, here. So um, the standard for NetConf Yank, for NetConf says that this is a marker so we can reliably find this in SSH session, this kind of stuff, yeah? Which has nothing to do with the device or banner or whatever. We can do this, right? In SSH-based automation, we can do this. So we have a lot of like magic and trying to understand what is the current prompt and try finding this. Um, There is part in the chat saying you would have to look for the next prompt which is super hacking now it shouldn't the prompt should be anchored. 
Yeah, so I, I know that Netmiko right now uses, uses this kind of magic where after every single command, it will try to find a new prompt, right? That's why, um, that's why when you are writing the code, so when you are gathering commands and you use Netmiko send command, I like 99% use expect string prompt. So like, you know, I make sure it's static, but it doesn't solve issues 100%. So we saw that in first in configure, it doesn't do this. There is no expect statement in Netmiko send config. And it also can fail on the connection phase. So we were able to see the failure when we were doing configuration and I'm not sure I will be able to find it. Failed to find. You, you are seeing something like this, right? Where there was like, we were not able to find, like for some reason it thought that the prompt during connection was empty string or I don't know, or a space. I don't know what it is, right? But I feel like the the is a little bit more magic in it, Miko, than it should be, or I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just see that there are, whenever I use it, I have to do a lot of things to make it more work reliably on a big network. Of course, if I have like a single device, you will probably not even see this kind of issues. But you have a big network, you will stumble up across all of these different issues. So yeah, um, I wish it was more reliable. This would be my kind of um, you know bottom line. Um, Spartan in the chat says, "So the issue don't do a search automation at all. Issue soft." Uh, Spartan, I agree with you 100%. I personally, whenever I can, I don't do this. I use netconfig. This is my preferred way to configure devices. Uh, sadly, for this project specifically, we can't do that for a number of reasons. First, our routers here in this particular lab do not support netconfig. Second, we want when we are doing tests between different tools to be on the same uh, playing field, right? So if I use uh, SSH automation in Ansible, I want to use it in these other tools that I use, like as a common de denominator. And lastly, of course, majority of people still use SSH. So again, like I would want to compare them, you know, on the most wide, widely used use case. But of course, my preference is not to use SSH automation at all. Um, that's too broad. Screen scrape automation. Yeah, I I agree with you 100. There there are even even more interesting things like there are ways that you can send messages on inside SSH session. So for example, there are ways that you can make in other SSH session to pop up some message. And for example, I can deliberately kill kind of like a break a script, right? By sending a message with this prompt or something or with hash symbol on another SSH session where the script is running. So there, there is like all this crazy stuff that can happen in SSH session, which is like, you know, it was designed for humans. This is what it was. It was designed for, for network administrators. We can use the same interface for our programmatic stuff. Um, but we keep doing that. Uh, Gotta push those people who refuse to upgrade their gear from old 6500. People only understand consequence. Gotta put a line in the set. Again, Spartan, I am 200% on board with you. Um, it's, it's the wide industry problem. It's not only because of the old devices. I saw a bunch of folks who had the completely new network, like with Catalyst 9, 9Ks and ISR 400s and ISR 40, uh, ISR what, 1100. So everything that can run ISXC 
and whereas they could do all of this cool automation like the network was 100 percent consist consisting of those devices yeah and they were still doing um like cli based automation that's what you can do right you can only try to educate encourage people okay you have all of these things you can try using reliable um, automation interfaces right apis um, this is what it is i mean i still believe like even three years from now a lot of people will be still using ansible and be doing ssh automation there right uh, but I'm trying, trying to do my part, you know, showing how the different tools perform, um, you know, trying to do streams on netconf yank, on restconf and all these things. Yeah, it's a big problem. So bottom line here of all this five minutes rant is that we are using here CLI based automation and NetMiko seems to be doing a little bit of more magic and a little bit less reliable than I expect it to be, unfortunately. Um, so, so this is something like just to keep in mind. In my production, I have... So whenever I use, do gather commands and if I have to use that interface, I always use expect string. Uh, I have uh, retry handl handlers in place, so when there is um, some kind of exception based on uh, NetMiko exception, I would rerun that. So all these kind of things which make my script more reliable. Um, it is what it is. All right, folks. I think this is a good point to wrap up the stream and wrap up this project as well. There are obviously, this is not done there it i require much more testing but i don't feel like there is anything new to learn about this and anything interesting for you guys to see on the stream uh, so the rest of the testing is going to be done offline expect an article and all code that i wrote in at some point to be published um i will not do any predictions here it will just take time. There is still like a lot of information to go through. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. Um, there's question in the chat. Let me address that. Sorry if this is a topic, but would you mind going over applications you have pinned on your uh, on your taskbar? There is a lot I don't recognize, and some look pretty interesting. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. So let me do this really quick. So I have this process lasso. This is like a task manager, uh, but there is very easy way to um, assign do affinity of applications to cores. For example, I can say that I would like Streamlabs OBS to uh, assign to a specific core numbers. This is very useful when I'm streaming or when when I'm playing games. So like everything is kind of like on specific cores. Um, Explorer, this is directory opus, I will not run it, but this is uh, kind of like total commander um, for Windows, you know, stops and all this kind of stuff, very useful thing. Any connect client, Chrome, Firefox, Firefox developer edition, uh, Brave browser, this is like a Chromium without all of the Chrome stuff. Uh, I really like this browser. It blocks ads and some other things. Spotify, Visual Studio Code, Telegram Messenger. Um, this is my uh, this is C uh, Con Emu, which is terminal emula emulator for Windows. Uh, I really like it. Um, then OneNote to store notes. Outlook. Uh, this is Tutan Tutanota. Um, this is a service where I am storing my personal emails and this is my email client. So it's kind of like if you know about Proton Email or Fastmail, this is like very similar. They have a paid service where you can connect your domain and store emails. Control Panel, Secure CRT, this is my SSH emulator of my choice. 
GNS3 client, though I started using more uh, web GUI for GNS3 instead of uh, instead of standalone app. Streamlabs OBS to, to, for streaming. Discord. Uh, this is my Destiny application for you know game I'm playing. VMware Workstation. Um, for virtualization, Pretzel Rocks. This is where I am playing all of the background music without roy royalties. Uh, so I am free to do that on my stream. And this is pretty much it. Uh, all right, folks. Um, last thing, as I announced at the very beginning, we I am planning exclusive stream for the next week. Not on Sunday, it's probably going to be during the week. Um, it's uh, at this point it's around 80 percent is going to happen i'm still trying to figure out um schedule with coordinate schedule with guests so this is an exclusive stream about one unreleased product with uh, people who have direct relation to this product so they will be on the stream with me it's 80 percent it's going to happen like I'm still scheduling is a little bit tough because of the time zones, but I'm trying to make it happen. Uh, stay tuned for announcements on social media. Um, as soon as we know all details, this is going to be like, I'm going to advertise it as much as I can. Uh, yeah. And with that, thank you so much. And I will see you next time. Goodbye. All right, see you guys.